Hello and welcome to a new series where we're going to be making a very small game without typing any line of code. Of course we're going to be programming but we're going to be using visual scripting and we're going to make a very simple clicker game. For those of you who don't know, clicker games are games where basically the main mechanic is clicking and since our brains are so fucked up that we want to see numbers go up, we will be clicking forever. I will I, I don't I don't actually recommend you to try any of the games that I'm showing right now, but if you're curious, I'm sure that you will find them interesting. Uh, just to make sure, don't ever start playing one of those games if you have something to do because you are probably not gonna do it. Uh, so let's go ahead and start here. An empty project. Uh, let's create uh, with user interface as we're used to in this channel. And let's call this main, which is the name of this scene. Let's save it as main as well. Uh, now that we have this scene ready, let's start adding the most important things in clicker games. First of all, a button, which is going to be the make something. We don't have the theme yet to base this clicker game but let's say let's stay with something and a label okay which is gonna be how many we have of that thing pretty simple right here we're gonna have a number which is gonna be going up and every time we click on the button we want to make this number go up okay first thing is to create a script and since again we're not gonna be writing like typing any code we're gonna be using the visual scripting let's attach a script and here instead of the language gd script you can select visual scripting okay is main.vs the name of the file and we have it here so if you follow my previous videos on graph nodes uh, you will see that visual scripting is very similar to that interface and how this work is a little bit weird if you already know how to program but for new people it might be interesting to discover how to create something with it here on this new panel you have the name of the files that you have open so if you have several of them you will have them here i only will be using one for now uh, here is the base type of the node which will have some extra properties so if you create this script with the base as the button, this will be the button uh, base type. And here we have functions, variables, and signals, which are the different kind of sections that we can edit for this particular visual script. And here in the available nodes are all the different kind of building blocks that you have to create the logic of whatever you're doing. Let's connect the button here the node, the press signal, which every time you press it, it will send a signal to this visual script. That's connected here with main, and it's gonna be on button pressed. Okay, so we have it here, we see like a grid. Uh, you can zoom in, zoom out, make it visible or not. If you hide the grid, it will be freely there. Otherwise it will just snap to the grid. And you can actually change the side of the grid as well. Okay, here is a function and, and this will execute a series of nodes which are called like that. Since we are not tracking how many things we have clicked, let's create a variable that will store that information. Here if you press plus, you get here a new variable and you can double click here and set a name which is going to be the count. Let's call it like count, okay? This is going to be our main resource for this clicker game. And here you have the any. It's on green and very weird to read. It means what is the kind of variable that we want to have here. And we want to have an integer, which is basically a number, which will go from zero to a lot. The value is going to be zero and we can close this. So now we see that it will change to int. Uh, I don't know why this is zero still. Let's see. Okay, it's null. Uh, it's null right now and sometimes this happens 
Um, I think it like this feature is still a little bit weird sometimes. Like I had to set it to one and then back to zero. Uh, so it refreshes. I'm not sure if it will work anyway, but just to make sure like I do this. We want that every time that we press this button, we add one number, one value to this count. There is a property here in the variables, which is export. And it makes it very handy for you to use the drag and drop of the program to modify these kind of values. So let's go ahead and click on export. And that will make it that whenever I select this main node, which is the owner of this variable, it will have here on the inspector the count. And we can modify the value from here. So now if I want to change this, I can drag and drop this count variable here. And here when i select it i have some extra properties now the operation that i want to do is add because i want to add a number which is going to be one so this basically adds one number to this variable and i connect it to this node so now every time i push a button it will add a number to this variable Okay, but we want to display the label information, right? Like we want to show this number on the program because if I run it like this and I press it, this is not changing. So let's update that label. To do that, I can click here on the label and here on the text field, I can drag and drop it to here. So now this will set the text. And for the value, here that we have the string value, we can drag and drop this one to here, which will get the value, the current value of the count, and connect it here. So now that we have the value set there, we can connect the line, the white line, and to the last one. It's kind of complicated to think it like this, but the white line, which goes from every triangle to any other triangle, is the order in which these things are going to be executed. And the dots with colors are the values of those uh, properties. In this case, the value, I set it from the box itself. But in this other case, the value is being getting updated depending on the count that we have here. Let's try and see if it works because I'm setting an integer to a string and they are different kind of variables. The text variable should be able to convert it, but I'm not sure if it's going to happen automatically. Yeah. On property one and text of invalid set value one. If, yeah. So we need to convert this integer, which is a number to a string. And how can we make that? Well, here's where we have these nodes, the different ones. So if you go here and start searching them, you will see that there are so many of them, there are so many different kind of functions. Um, but there's a, a search here that you can type and maybe int. Let's see. To in here, string to int. So there would be a int to string. String, let's see. Construction. Here, string and int. So now we convert this value and instead of connecting it there, we connect it here. So this int is going to be converted into a string. And a string is basically any text that we can display. And the converted value is going to be updating the label. Let's try it out again, see if this works. Yeah, we can make that number go up. And that's the basis of any clicker game. OK, let's, let's do. One more thing, let's make this new button, which is going to be, again, here you have the recent ones, it's easier. Uh, just going to be auto clicking. Okay, 
and the auto clicking is gonna have another label which is gonna be how many auto clickers we have right now we have zero auto clickers uh, I'm going to start organizing this a little bit better uh, so, so I'm gonna start using these containers uh, it's gonna be the horizontal box container and let's go ahead and add the button and the label so that way I have in this container both um, I select this option which will make sure that children are not selectable like the label says right here on screen and now I can move it anywhere like here maybe okay this is gonna be the auto clickers and uh, this is gonna be the button and the label for how many do we have so again it's a new thing to show let's do that every time that we click on the auto clickers it will generate clicks automatically let's create a new function for these auto clicker things let's go on the button on the node and connect it as we did before to the visual script but this time instead of on button press on auto clicker let's rename the name of the function auto clicker pressed on auto clicker pressed yeah so every time we click the auto clicker let's create a new variable for it which is gonna be auto clicker let's edit the variable to be an int let's do the trick for the value which is gonna be zero sorry one and then zero and the same thing but we're gonna do it in a different way here i show you how you can add it with the weird stuff like selecting the export variable and anything like that but here i want to show you how to do it with these same variables so if you drag it and drop it you get the the value only getting it but if you keep pressing control in windows or linux i think it's command on mac and you drag it you get the set so here you can set the value from that and there are infinite ways of setting the value so i want to show you now how to do it with the operations here it is going to be the math operation add here you have two values and it will return one output so since the output is going to be what i want to set the clicker let's connect it already and first of all we want to get the current value so we drag and drop it so we get the value for a here if you select the inspector while clicking on this node instead of saying any type that we want to add we want to do an integer so we are adding two integers together value one is the current value value v is going to be one so we are adding one to the auto clicker variable and we're setting it to that value we connect it so this should, this should set it the same way as we did it before but using different uh, visual nodes uh, now we want to update the label so we will do the same that is going to be the same we drag and drop the text and now we need the conversion which was string and int here so now we convert the value of the auto clicker to the label and we connect it like this okay so here i have the entire thing which is making basically the same that we did in the other node uh, on the other function sorry which is this one but in a more complicated way you can see that there are many different paths that you can follow let's try it out see if it works auto clicking yes we are getting the auto clickers going up and yeah when i click on make something the total value goes up as well okay let's now do the auto clicking 
to work properly. We want that every time we have the auto clickers, like for every second, we add a number to the count. Here on the functions, there's like a drawer button where you can click and you get all the pre-made, all the, the functions that you have available by default on any node. Um, the one that I want to use is process. This one, as you can read here, it will happen all the time. So every frame is going to be running through all the logic that I have inside that function. And what I want to do there is to now figure out how I can get if a second has passed or any particular amount of time has passed. And if it has passed, then add the amount of auto clickers to the count number. To make it more simple, let's create just a second called variable, uh, a variable called second. We're just gonna track how many seconds are passing by. Second, okay. And now delta is the time that happens between each frame in a second. I believe, I could be wrong. I'm just, I'm not very used to working with delta because in Game Maker it wasn't incentivized. But anyway, <laughs> should be something like that. So what I want to do is add delta two second. And since I'm not sure about this and you're gonna find yourself into this situation, let's try to do a little bit of debugging or just live coding or whatever with visual scripting, which I don't know, I think is interesting. Set the second, let's, uh, as we did before, add operators math add. Let's see. We want to add the delta to the seconds and that's going to be the new value for the seconds. Uh, okay, so let's connect these options. Remember, if they don't have a white arrow, they are not getting executed. They are only for values. The white arrows is actually the program running and getting from this node to this node to whatever you have. Okay, this should be adding delta every frame to the seconds variable. But I want to see how it's happening. So let's print it out in the output. Let's see, print. This is a function called print, which will get any value and will show it to you in the console. Uh, we want to get the seconds again. Like what are the values of the seconds? Okay. I hope you're getting the idea of how this works, but basically function process every frame we add to the seconds like the delta value, which is going to be different every frame, but at the end of a second it's going to be one. Now that we have it, we're going to display it on the terminal. Let's try it out. Okay, there's an error. Okay, a float and a nil, because of course this is a nil. That's the bug I forgot about. So value is going to be an integer, or no, a float. Float is basically a number with decimals, okay? So right now, second is going to be, oh, oh, let's change this. That's a very annoying bug. I'm going to submit that bug right now. Okay, so value is going to be zero, and now it should be working. Let's try it out again. Yes, you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, it seems like it's going like I intended. Okay, so now we have this thing going up all the time. Let's squish this a little bit together. Okay. And I'm gonna set, I'm gonna be doing that every time the second is bigger than one, okay? Uh, if it's bigger than one, it's going to go back to zero and I'm going to execute something. So every time we get this number, you see that it's getting added just by a little bit. When we get to one number, we do something. How can we make that? Here, I guess, bigger than, no, on operators maybe, logic, mm, it's probably a compare. Yes, a compare. <laughs> okay greater 
Okay, so if we have a number A is greater than B, it's going to give us a Boolean. So what do we want to check? We want to check for floats. And B is going to be 1, which is going to be our limit. And A is going to be our number. So if the second is bigger than one, this bool, which is true, bool it means a boolean is going to be only true or false. This will give us true or false depending on if it is bigger or not. Um, oh my god, I, I hope you're understanding this. It's quite complicated to explain it because <laughs> I have all this in my head, but it's hard to put it into a, a tutorial. Okay, so if you're still with me, okay, now that we have this, if you have these white arrows and you don't know what to connect it to or you want to create a condition of anything, you can drag and drop it to the to any empty space. And when you release it, you will see here like different things that you can do. Here you have the print that I searched for before and that other way, just for convenience. But now we want to do a condition because the condition is going to be this one. If this one is true, this will happen. If this one is false, this will happen. And after everything of this happened, you can continue the program from here. Um, what do we want to do now? I said to reset the seconds to zero. So I keep press control and I drag it, which is going to be set to zero. So if it's bigger, we set it to zero. And if it's not, we do nothing. Okay. What happened when we set it to zero? Well, now I want to add all the auto clickers to click. So every time a second happens, all the auto clicker value is going to be added to the count. So we do the same. We do the adding. We get the value of the auto clicker. We add it to the count. And that's going to be the new value of count. So I'll press control, draw it, set to count. That's going to be the value. So after we set the seconds to zero, which means that this will happen every time because we're only checking for one. After we set the value to zero, we set the count to the name, the number of the auto clickers. We can remove print because we don't need it. And I hope this works. Let's try it out. Okay, a float. What? Arguments fell. A nil. Okay, second is still being nil. Two hours later. Okay, so after hitting my head against the wall for a while, I think I figured out the issue, and the issue was here on this step because the game doesn't really like me to set this to other to zero so i went and created an issue on github explaining what i found and this is what you're gonna have to do unfortunately with these kind of features so let's try to modify a few things and let's try to get this to print again sorry for <laughs> uh okay uh let's uh drag and drop this to the space and do a print to get here the value and see if we are actually adding it correctly like before okay yeah it's being added so now that we know that it's being added uh, let's connect this to the condition which is if it's bigger than one, do this. Let's print again after the done to see if this is resetting like it should be. It goes to one and it goes, okay. Let's see, let's go back. Okay, it's never one exactly, right? Yeah, it's never one exactly because 
of course this makes it bigger okay so when it's bigger it is doing that it's setting the seconds again back to zero and then the count should be adding the auto clicker okay uh, let's do some auto clickers here let's make five. Oh yeah but the label is not updating so we actually should be updating this number all the time because if you remember we only update the label if we press on the button here so instead of doing that here let's go ahead and update the label on every process that we have here so every time we run we're running this value we are updating the label so let's go back to the label that we want let's get the text and now let's get the count and let's set oh sorry let's get the count transform it into a string oh transfer it to a string and now that we have the string we can connect the process the first thing you're going to do is update the label to get the value and then we can do the second thing okay so when we're having different options different uh, connections and things like that inside one of the same scripts but you want to make it a little bit more organized there is a thing which are comments here you have them and it's a special kind of note that you can overlay or, or underlay i'd say uh, on boxes to make it more like easier to read so this time i want to select all this and the comment for this is gonna be updating the count label so we know that all that logic over there it's only going to be updating the count label and we can ignore it because it seems to be fine and the rest is going to be the rest of the script so let's try it now if i click it it's going up and if i have an auto clicker it should be adding one every second to auto clickers to for a second and if i click it goes up and i think that's it even if we had some issues with it at the beginning and even if it's a little bit more complicated to get to understand these these things i haven't touched my keyboard almost at all uh, i i can do all this through visual scripting and as you can see here you don't have to write any line of code to get all this to work okay this is this was not planned for the video but uh, i tweeted about my frustration while i was looking for that error and creating the ticket and actually juan the creator of Godot, answered that they are planning on rewriting the visual scripting for version 4.0 so i will try to make all my suggestions on time and i will do my best to also help them make this a reality it was just a quick note that i wanted to show here uh, just to make you understand how great the community is and how fast they respond to any kind of feedback that you have so i hope you you so i hope you got a general idea of how visual scripting works and on the next videos i'm gonna be adding more options like this to the clicker game and call it a day i don't think it's gonna be bigger longer than three videos or so so i will try to get them out quickly if you have any extra question about visual scripting uh, feel free to ask hopefully after i finish this video series I can create uh, a few more issues to GitHub so they can actually improve it and make it work even better. And also, I think I'm starting to get a few ideas on how to make this a little bit simpler to understand because there's a lot of things design-wise that could be better on it. But if you don't have any programming experience and you want to start trying things out, this is a great way to 
just dive into a game and start making things. Also, if you want to help me make these videos, there's a Patreon link. And I know that most of you live by now. So if you are still there while I'm talking to you right now, I'm really, really grateful. And remember to leave any comment uh, or whatever that you want me to get. I read all of them, of course. And yeah, thank you so much again and see you on the next video. Bye.